Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and this is our ninth video on the SSIS interview questions and answers series. So let's continue on this one. So our first question is how to create a temporary table in the SSIS control flow and then use it in the data flow task. So normally if you create a temp table in the control flow task and then if you will try to use it in the data flow task then the SSIS package will fail. Okay. So there are few things that you need to take care while using the temporary tables inside the SSIS package. The first thing is that you need to use the global temporary table not the local temporary table and you know the global temporary table starts with the double hash before the table name. And then the most important thing is that you need to set the retain same connection property of the OLEDB connection to true. So the by default this property remains false. So you need to set this particular property to true. So these are the two things that you need to take care while using the temporary tables inside the SSIS package. I have already created a video on how to use a temporary table inside an SSIS package and I will share the link in the description of this particular video so that you can check that video as well in detail like how you can use it. Now the second question is what is the difference between execute T-SQL task and execute SQL task in SSIS. So there are few differences between the execute T-SQL task and execute SQL task that we are going to discuss. So the first difference between the execute T-SQL task and execute SQL task is that inside the execute T-SQL task you can write only the static queries while inside the execute SQL task you can write a dynamic query using the expression so you can pass the parameters to the SQL queries. Now the second difference is that inside the execute T SQL task you can only use the ADO.NET connection while inside the execute SQL task you can use multiple type of connections like OLEDB connection, ADO.NET connection and ODBC connections as well. Now the next difference is that inside the execute T SQL task you can write only the transact SQL version of the SQL queries while inside the execute SQL task you can use other dialects of the SQL language as well. For example you can create the excel sheet using this task inside an excel file. So now the third question is how to run few tasks from SSIS package on weekends and rest of the task on the weekdays. So I have already created an SSIS package on this particular topic and I will share the link of the video in the description of this particular video. So what we are doing here that the first task is the execute SQL task where we are getting the current day name and according to the current day name we have created three different sequence containers and written different type of code inside all different sequence containers and now using the precedence constants we have written the condition that if the day name is Monday then it will execute the code for the Monday. And if the day name is for example Wednesday then it will execute the code for Wednesday and if the day name is either Saturday or Sunday then the weekend code will be executed. So in the first task we are using a SQL query to get the current day name and then in the expressions we are actually checking like if the day name will be Monday then the Monday task will be executed and so on. Now our fourth question is what is delay validation property in SSIS. So in the OLEDB connections there is a property delay validation and which is by default is false and you can set it to true as well. So what delay validation property does it actually tries to validate the SSIS package before executing it. Okay. So for example there is a data flow task and you are trying to fetch the data from the data flow task and suppose SQL server table does not exist in the database. And if you will try to execute the SSIS package then it will throw an error that the table does not exist. So sometimes you know we create the SQL tables in the SSIS package itself and then we load the data to those tables. So most of the times it is advised that you need to set the delay validation property to true so that at the time of execution of the SSIS package if the table does not exist then the process can continue and maybe in the SSIS package we can create the tables and can load the data to those tables. So it is advised that you need to set the delay validation to true so that the validation can be delayed and it should not happen while executing the SSIS package. So now our fifth question is how many types of package configurations are available. Package configurations are used to provide the new property value or new value for the SSIS variables at runtime. There are two types of deployment the package deployment where an individual package can be deployed at a time to the different destinations. The second one is the project deployment where the whole SSIS project can be deployed to the SSIS catalog. 
Now in the package deployment, where an individual package can be deployed to different destinations, there are different kind of package configurations. The first one is the XML configuration file. So in the XML configuration file, we can set the properties of the SSIS package and we can provide the new values to the SSIS variable using the XML configuration file. The second one is the environment variable. So we can use the environment variable to store a value for a particular SSIS variable. The third one is the registry entry. So we can use the registry entry as well to get the new values for the SSIS variables. The fourth one is the parent package variable. So we can provide the values to the child packages from the parent package as well at the runtime. And the last one is the SQL server table. So in this particular configuration, a SQL server table can be used to provide the values to different properties of the SSIS package and to provide the new values to the different SSIS variables at runtime. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button. Do subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.